Hello everyone, welcome back to DJ's Podcast. This is Julia Staley. This is Sydney Cole. And Damian Riley. This week for our podcast we will be talking about capital punishment. And while we talk about this, we will be going through the movie, which is Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, which is on Netflix about Ted Bundy. The reading by Albert Campit, which is Reflections on the Guillotine. And what the theories of capital punishment are, which is retributivism and consequentialism. Capital punishment is defined as the legally authorized killing of someone as punishment for a crime. If you're thinking about retributivism, retribution is the punishment that is imposed because it is deserved, which is basically meaning that it's an eye for an eye. If you are for retributive justice, then you are for the death penalty mentally. If you're for it, you have two things that you think about. If someone kills someone, then they deserve to be killed. And another is, the victim feels justified for the killer if they lose their life. And if you're against it, you also think two different things. Life in prison is acceptable enough for killing someone because in some cases, the court can make a mistake and innocent people can be condemned, which is ethically wrong. And also you would think that some people can be rehabilitated instead of just being killed. If you have the view of consequentialism, then there are four things that go with it. The first one is deterrence, which is the threat of being executed in the future will be sufficient to cause people to refrain from committing a crime. Rehabilitation, which is the punishment that changed the felon in order to make him a better citizen afterwards. Another is incapacitation, which is sending the offender to prison to protect society and prevent them from committing another crime. And the last one is either restoration or reparation, which is when the offender making up for what they have done wrong. If you are for consequentialism, then you believe that it is or is not necessary for the death penalty to achieve its goals. If you are for it, there are two things. One is that If they die, then they can't hurt anyone again. And number two is if it deters others to do the same crime. If you're against it, one is to make sure that dangerous criminals are put in max security prisons. And two, it does not deter other criminals. So, for me, I think capital punishment is right in some cases and wrong in some cases. If the person is innocent for the crime that they committed, but they were convicted of it because the judge just didn't want to hear any other evidence, then they should definitely not be put on the death penalty and should die for what they have not done. But if it's the instance of Ted Bundy or a very notorious serial killer, I think they should definitely get the death penalty because of how many people they killed. They just should not really be on the earth anymore like they shouldn't even have like a chance to even live anymore because they already took so many lives away from people that could have had the chance to live and build their life so that they their life should just be ended automatically just like they ended the other person's life so I don't really know what my other two hosts think (laughs) but right now you're gonna hear from them so um so I agree with most of that but I also feel like their life and time on earth even though they did like an absolutely terrible crime could be put towards something productive like we in the reading they had talked about um putting these criminals into like hard labor and it could be like building a bridge or like even like clearing out fields or working in recycling or like anything even like way worse than that that the general public doesn't want to do like these criminals will then be forced to be productive towards society because they've taken someone out of society i get what you're saying there i get what you mean by that i i feel like people would be i don't know i feel like their lives would be put to better use i get that they killed someone but it's like their life is still here and who are you to say that, oh, because you killed someone, now you're going to die? Because then you're the one that's basically killing them, so yeah. then you should die also. Yeah, that, 
Yeah, the people mm-hmm. who give the person the capital punishment instead of saying are literally killing them. Yeah. Definitely. Damon, how do you feel about that? Well, for me, uh, capital punishment's a very sensitive subject. And as you said before, I think it should depend on, like, the number of people that someone killed. Because, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you kill one or two people, like, that's obviously bad, but it's not you shouldn't be worth you for, dying. Yeah. yeah. You should be put in prison and taught lessons about life and how that's not okay. Yeah, I also feel like cap- like the death penalty is almost like an easy out for them. Yeah. Like yeah, not... because they don't get to like they don't have to like think about what they've done or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like, like they just die. Like yeah. that's it. They don't get to sit there and rot in prison. Exactly. And basically... They can't realize their mistakes because they're dead. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It literally, and I feel like if say like that was me, like Ted Bundy killed my daughter, and I would want him to sit there and r- literally like rot in prison and die and not just a couple months later be put to death and then that's it well he was rotting for like 10 years so he did have hell of time yeah. i think like no he... i get that but like i want it literally up until like the day he dies like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i get that should be sentenced for life mm-hmm. so next we're going to be talking about the reading by albert camus The reading that we had to read was called Reflection of the Guillotine by Albert Camus, and during the reading, they covered that there is no proof that the death penalty ever made a single murder recoil, murderer recoil, and capital punishment could not, be intimidate, could not intimidate the man who doesn't know that he is going to kill, and who makes up his mind that like in, in the moment he commits the crime, he isn't thinking about, oh my god, this could end up me being in the death penalty because they don't think they're going to get caught that the retaliation is related to nature and instinct not the law that the rule of the condemned is to walk towards death passively in a sort of jury depression and that capital punishment should be replaced by hard labor for the life in the case of criminals considered um and for a mixed period in the case of others all right, now I'm going to ask my co-hosts about what they thought of the theories during the reading. So I thought the first and the second point that you made were very fascinating. The retaliation is related to nature and instinct is not law. And then the one where you said that capital punishment doesn't intimidate a man who knows that he is going to kill because he's in a state of frenzy. I think those two actually kind of go together because when you're in a state of frenzy, you really are just going with what you know and what you've like just have been known and what you've learned throughout your experiences in life and you aren't thinking about like the laws that we have in the world like everyone knows laws everyone knows that capital punishment is like an actual thing and everyone knows that they could die for killing someone but since we're in a state of frenzy it makes sense as to why it's related to nature and not law because they're only thinking about themselves and what they want to do and their nature not the law of the world that they're going in like definitely right in that moment yeah. They're not being like, oh, well, uh, let me stop and think about the repercussions and be killing this yeah, person. Yeah, they're not like, gonna be like, oh, I'm going to get put to go. death for this. I'm going to get shocked for this. Like, no. Like, they're yeah. literally just killing someone because that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so I wanted to circle back to the first point you made about how there's no proof that the death penalty ever made a single murderer recoil. I think that's true in many cases, and that's probably one of the reasons why... Uh, only 27 out of our 50 states are currently authorized to sentence the death penalty. And I feel the death penalty is not doing its job of scaring people away from killing. It definitely is not doing its job well because, in my opinion, like, it, like no one has stopped killing. Like, killers have been going around. There have been notorious killers literally for centuries in the world, even though the capital punishment is still a thing. They don't really think that the capital punishment is going to happen to them so they just keep killing they aren't scared of it no it's and like what Damien said it's not doing its job one of its many jobs because it's not its main job but it it's just not working like then what's almost the point of having it no yeah that, that like totally makes sense like there is no point of having it if it's not doing one of its complete jobs that it was supposed to do and I understand in like some cases like I get why Ted Bundy definitely was killed um, 
but he could have been put to more work or different reasons why. Okay, so now I'll talk about Ted Bundy. And so his full name was Theodore Robert Bundy. He was an American serial killer who kidnapped, raped, and murdered numerous women and girls. This all happened during the 1970s. He kid he killed several young women in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, Florida, and Florida between 1974 and 1978. He confessed to killing 28 murder like 28 women, but some have believed that he committed hundreds more. In 1979, he was sentenced to death by electric chair, and he was executed in Florida in 1889 or oh my god 1989 at the age of 42 years old. While his trial was going on, the popular media tried to turn him into a romantic figure, which I think is ridiculous, because these girls were then coming to the trial and thinking that he was this really handsome guy that deserved to be spared and deserved to not get the death penalty, and they were coming to the courtrooms in support of him, even though they could have been one of the many girls that was killed. So, yeah, I actually, like, grew, like, everyone knew who Ted Bundy was before, like, we even did this thing. Like, everyone knows who Ted Bundy is because he is such a notorious serial killer and he killed so many people. Like, um, when I was, like, when this movie first came out, what we're about to be talking about, like, my dad actually came up to me and was like, why are you watching that? And I was like, dad, it's, like, about Ted Bundy. Like, it's, like, I don't know, a story I'm, like, interested in. it. He was like, no, like, he was an awful person. Like, I can't believe you're watching that stuff. So, like, even people from back then who are still alive still have the same thoughts on him about how nasty of a person he was. And so I actually knew about, like, who he was before and how many women he killed and how nasty he was. But that's why I think we chose this, because we all did have our own knowledge on him before we even had to do this podcast. And there was a movie made about Time Bundy called Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. In the movie, Ted lives with his girlfriend Elizabeth and her daughter Kendall. News reports came out that killings about college girls and other women helping a man with a broken arm. During these news reports, a sketch came out that looked exactly like Ted. This led him to go to court and work on his own case. After that, he goes to jail, winning his trial for the murders. While in the courtroom, he escapes by jumping out the window because the officer was not paying attention to him. Six days later, he was caught and sent back to prison, and in those six days, he was free. He committed many more murders. After that happened, he then escapes again by cutting a hole in the ceiling. He was captured again and is told that he is being accused for murder and rape of 47 women and a 12-year-old girl. He thinks that he can be a better lawyer for himself, so he fires his lawyer in the courtroom and represents himself during the trial. His stance and claim during the trial is that they have the wrong guy and he's not guilty. Ted's former friend came back, Carol and Bone, and then forms a relationship which ends up have them having a kid. During his sentencing trial, he's found guilty and sentenced to the death penalty by electric chair. This leads to Liz coming to visit him before he's executed and she asks him if he did any of it and how he cut the girl's head off. Movie ends with this conversation and him writing hacksaw on the window telling Liz how he killed the girl. All right, Damien, I thought that was a really good summary of the movie. I personally liked the movie until I kind of figured out that it was from the perspective of his girlfriend's view. I didn't like how she kind of like romanticized him throughout the whole movie that you didn't really get to see the whole end of the detectives trying to figure out that he was really a killer that you didn't really see that part of him until the very very end of the movie when the girlfriend figured out that he was a real killer because throughout the movie you're like wait well this guy kind of seems innocent like I didn't really like that I thought they would go more in depth into that um yeah I also I get what you mean because like Ted Bundy was a killer but this movie isn't it was based off of what he did, but they never showed any of the killings, really. They just, like, showed, like, either the aftermath or just the before part or, like, right when it happened. They would never show, like, the actual part because Liz, since it was in her point of view, 
she never saw any of that. So that's why I think the movie was filmed like that. I kind of actually liked the movie because it just, like, it was more of, like, an updated version of, like, what, like, some people want to see. Yes, you said they romanticized Ted Bundy. And I think they might have tried to make it in the girlfriend's view to do that because so many girls, like, during the time of the trial did think he was such a handsome man for no reason, even though he killed a bunch of people. Like, they didn't care about that. Like, in the courtroom during the movie, it was a bunch of girls on his side. Like, in the back, like, you could see that if you were really playing close detail of what the actual movie was. So I actually kind of liked it, but I get what you mean by how you didn't like it because it was in the girlfriend's perspective. Overall, I thought it was a pretty good movie, though. I like, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Now I'm going to connect the movie with our topic of capital punishment. And I felt this movie was definitely pro-capital punishment. One of the reasons was the judge stated in his sentencing, You shall be put to death by a current of electricity that shall pass through your body until you are dead. This is a death st- sentence given to a human which clearly shows capital punishment. Ted Bundy was sentenced to death twice, once in 1979 and again in 1980. And in 1989, he was executed in Florida by the electric chair. As Sydney mentioned earlier, capital punishment does not deter people from killing, which is similar in the movie when Ted escaped the first time by jumping out the window of the courthouse, which during his brief escape, he killed more people, even though he knew he was on death row. The knowledge of being on death row did not stop Ted from killing more women. This also relates to retribution when uh, the punishment is imposed because it is deserved so the judge had thought that because ted had killed so many people that he deserved to die so the eye for eye theory yeah that was definitely it he was definitely given an eye for eye theory on that because he thought since ted killed someone ted should be killed because he had killed so many people and it just was the right thing to do in his brain and in the jury's mind This movie also relates to consequentialism because of rehabilitation, which means that the punishment changed the felon in order to make him a better citizen afterwards. During the judge giving him his sentencing, he told Ted Bundy that it was a waste to see him go into the death penalty because he could have been such a good lawyer and he thought that he would have been good in the courtroom and he actually said that he would have liked to work with him later in the future, which means he could have been rehabilitated, but since his actions were so bad they just couldn't even try to do that and it wouldn't have made sense to rehabilitate him and he had no effort left in his life to do anything also going off of consequentialism if you're for it it means that if they die they can't hurt anyone again and this is what that they were doing with ted bundy since he was going on death row and he was in jail for so long and they knew he was going to die he wasn't going to be able to kill anyone anymore or hurt anyone which is what they wanted as their end goal Overall, it was a good movie. Like We would like to hear everyone's opinions on capital punishment, so leave it in the comment section. And thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.